Hello, overdraft fees? Yeah, you can suck a dick. It is time for Money Out Loud, the book and financial edutainment show that I got tired of waiting for a network to produce. I am Verna, your financial hype woman and mysteriously rich auntie in training. <laughs> this episode's all about banks, and I'm taking you on a journey because mama needs a new bank. I did write an entire chapter on how to pick a bank, and now I'm going to follow my own advice. <laughs> Let us synchronize dive into learning out loud, where I consume all the money stuff you don't have time for, and I bark through my notes. Laugh out loud. I asked my IG friends to recommend some banks for me to sniff at, and over 200 suggestions later, I picked three candidates. Ally Bank, Greenwood Bank, and Self-Help Federal Credit Union. It's a local Bay Area joint. But I only have one rose in my hands. It's giving Bachelor, it's giving Tyra, it's giving America's Next Top Model. I mean, because picking a bank is kind of like dating, okay? Holding your money like holding your heart is an honor. After inhaling a couple of bank-related podcasts, you know, for strength, I made a decision. I'll tell you what bank I chose, but more importantly, I will tell you the three steps I took to do it. Once again, this is gonna sound like dating. I got clear on my needs, I scoped out my options, and I gave the nice guy a chance. What's up, ethical banking? Ready? <laughs> Wasn't there a scene in Boy Meets World where Topanga was like, we're gonna move all the men underground and use them for breeding purposes only? What happened to that? Picking a bank is like picking a lover, and a tarot reader actually helped me come to this realization. Stay with me, stay with me. So last week here in San Francisco, I saw an incredible tarot reader. Hi Maritza. Like the most basic bee, I asked her about my love life, and she ripped into me, dude. She was like, why are you so worried about the how or the when when you don't even know the what? You haven't pinpointed exactly, exactly what you want. So I was thinking what everybody was thinking, which is like, <laughs> it's exactly like picking a bank. Financial hype woman. It is like dating. You need to know exactly what is specifically important to you or else you're just gonna end up overwhelmed by all the options out there and you're gonna end up staying with your ex out of habit or fear. Oh my God. I felt that one. I felt it in my spleen. Damn it. What do you want? If I were to set up, say, a dating profile to find my perfect bank, here are my three non-negotiables. A budgeting system. I wanna be able to split up my checking accounts and my savings accounts inside of them into separate buckets, categories, whatever. I wanna track goals, I'm gonna nickname everything. I wanna be in that bitch like Picasso also customizing, making art. Number two, fees. I want no maintenance fees and hopefully low or no overdraft fees because I wanna move my money around a lot. And three is community compass. What I mean by that is I've been with big banks my whole life and the options are just better now. I think I can choose a bank with my personal morals more than I could when I was like 16 and BOFA was literally the only option. Also a non-negotiable we should all have, therapy. I mean insurance. If it's a bank, you want it to be FDIC insured. If it's a credit union, you want it to be NCUA or NCUSIF insured. Tito Biden, if you're listening, petition to rename all of this. Basically, if anything happens to your money, the bank explodes, a sponsored Kardashian coughs the wrong way, your money is protected. A couple other things you should consider. Maybe your job pays you in cash or you deal with cash a lot. You need to be able to deposit. So maybe you need like ATMs or a physical branch. Not all banks can offer that. Maybe you know you'll be taking out a home or a personal loan soon. Not all banks can offer that. So get really clear on what your specific money life needs. Like dating, the options are then gonna get slim, but the ones that pass the test are less likely to disappoint you, we hope. Welcome to everybody's favorite segment called Secrets Out Loud, where we put your financial shame on blast. Now this episode of Money Out Loud has been all about banks. And I was like, who has secrets about banks? How boring, whatever. But y'all had such a reaction to the last time we did Secrets Out Loud. I just asked, like anybody have any, si boom, bang. Inbox, da, 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 da. I think it's too hot. Oh, immediate burn, <laughs> immediate burn. I asked, got any money secrets to anonymously whisper and did you, did you? I used the first COVID stimulus check to get a life coach. I couldn't even blame you because the moment that we were getting those stimulus checks, we all needed a life coach. We needed a life facelift. We needed a world facelift, we still do. Dad said he had money set aside to pay for my wedding, but if I don't marry, I don't get it. Interesting. I just have so many questions. Dad, what do you plan to do with that money? If your child does not want to sign a paper binding them legally to another broken human being. I don't wanna call myself clairvoyant, but I see you buying a Porsche. Okay, for the person whose secret this is, I have a plan. You and I get married. We fake these elaborate wedding plans, right? Set up all these fake vendors, whole thing's connected to our shared Venmo. We take the money, you shave 10% off the top for me, you go riding to the sunset. Questions, comments, concerns? My dad secretly applied for credit cards using my brother's name and maxing out all cards. Dads are losing. Dads are losing in this game. Grandmas are winning, moms are winning. This kind of thing is what worries me about what we know as LLC Twitter, right? Bunch of financial experts being like, you open up all this stuff in your kid's name and then they're your employee and then now you're running a corporation and you are a millionaire by 26. Some money moves, 
moves. Like a dance class are too advanced for others. Some of us are just gonna hurt ourselves. So we just need to slow down. We just need to stop. Mom asked me to loan 200K to buy my dad's share of their property, hashtag Filipino divorce. It's funny to me because the words Filipino and divorce don't typically go together. There's a lot of stigma, especially like deeply Catholic anti-divorce stigma in the Filipino culture. So this messy. Whoa. My family still thinks I'm poor. I let them believe that so they won't ask me for money. Cheers to that. Absolutely yes. Okay, I know that my book is literally called Money Out Loud, but some people can't handle the volume. Do you see what I'm saying? Not everybody deserves to hear you for your safety and for theirs. Support, full support. Is it cold enough yet? Ow. Nope, nope, nope. My mom deeded the house to my uncle so I could get college grant money. Love that. But then my uncle passed without a will and now the house is in probate. <sighs> get a will, get a trust. When we got married, my husband had 60K of debt from his previous marriage slash divorce that I didn't know about. We have cleaned it up and paid off our house, but I know that his family spending habits prevail and without me, he'd probably be living in a van by the river. <laughs> Proposal, all of us, she's gays, they's live in a commune, a financially safe commune, and these dads and grandpas and husbands are not allowed. I feel like Topanga had the same idea. Wasn't there a scene in Boy Meets World where Topanga was like, we're gonna move all the men underground and use them for breeding purposes only? What happened to that? Topanga for president. And that is all we have time and emotional space for today in this segment of Secrets Out Loud. I haven't even taken a sip. The tea is so hot, literally. This has been Secrets Out Loud, a segment of the Money Out Loud show. And remember, if you don't have something financially nice to say, send the tea to me, okay, <laughs> right here. Bye-bye. A question I get a lot, what is the difference between a big bank, an online bank, and a credit union? Let's describe it in people you meet on Hinge. <laughs> now a big bank, like a Chase or a Bank of America, is like rich kid who peaked in high school. Rich kid thinks you like them. <laughs> no, you just like the parties they throw. Big banks have locations and ATMs everywhere, the most updated tech, but they can be low to high key problematic. Like a former track star way past his glory days, can't let it go and has gotten by on his charm for too long. If you know what I mean. Big banks are for profit businesses, which means they have to make profit. They have to make money for their shareholders. So they're also the most likely to have the lowest interest rates on their savings accounts because they don't want to give you money. And they're more likely to hit you with nonsense fees, like maintenance fees, which is literally just a fee for having the account. Now credit unions, like self-help federal credit union, they're like earnest government employees. They're in the system, but at least they're trying to fix it. They use words like collective trauma. They sign their emails off with like, in community. Now credit unions are technically not banks. They're not for profit organizations or cooperatives. So when you join, you're not a customer, you're a member. You're like a part owner. What I'm saying is this person might call you sister, you just met too close man. The profits a credit union makes will go back to you in the form of lower or no fees, higher interest rates on savings accounts, you might be able to help make decisions on what the credit union does or the programs they do or what they invest in, stuff like that. Credit unions can be a little clicky, like you often have to be part of a certain community or a demographic or a city to join, like only healthcare workers or only military workers. But some credit unions like Self Help FCU, it looks like you just have to pay a one-time $5 fee to support their community. Nice. Online banks? Tech bros who give you a little bit of vertigo. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. Witty, quick-minded, knows the memes, absolutely has undiagnosed ADHD for sure. He's always like, disrupt. But fun to bring to parties. Online banks like Ally exist entirely online. So their profits aren't going to paying for like physical locations or like physical mail spam. Their profits go towards having the latest tech, sleekest apps, unconventional features, and often the lowest fees and highest interest rates. The downside, they're never home. You know, they say they wanna meet for coffee or lunch, but they won't. Online banks have no physical locations, so it often means there's no easy way to deposit cash. Hello, what about me? We'll get to you soon. This is a rant. No, this is a plea. I'm looking to move banks, but like the dating world, you know how people are like, no person has all three things, health, wealth, and a dump truck. No bank has all three things that I'm looking for. They may have low or no fees, pretty easy to find these days. They may have a community core, thanks to the rise of ethical and progressive banks, but no one, no bank has the in-bank budgeting system I'm looking for. I wanna be able to split my checking account money into separate categories, separate buckets, to track my goals, nickname everything, and I wanna be able to move my money around a lot. I was looking at Ally Bank. You can open up to 10 buckets, but again, it's for their savings accounts, so that you can only withdraw up to six times. Dang it. I went down Business Insider's entire list of 17 bank accounts. <laughs> One bank offers three pockets. I need like 10 minimum. SoFi's Vault, you can't pay bills directly from a vault. You have to transfer, I'm lazy. Wealthfront's goal system, it's savings only, but they do have this cool like tiered automated goal system for your priorities. Wings Financial, their budget tools sound cool, but I gotta be a pilot. Now, Capital's Payday Divi feature sounded interesting, so I basically took the next step in our relationship. And I was like, 
capital Payday Divi Reddit search, okay? You already know what I'm talking about. And what I found gave me fight or flight. But I went snooping and apparently like a week ago, a kind Redditor who literally saw a change in the fine print of Ally Bank pointed out that Ally may be bringing buckets to their checking accounts, which would be exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm saying is, Ally, what's up? How can I help us both win here? Hmm? This is financially inappropriate. So do all banks suck a little? Do any of them suck less? Yeah, I'll be wrong. Basically no money making thing in the US is 100% pure and ethical because capitalism. Everybody is forced to take advantage of somebody else to make money. But there are banks that are trying to do better and I'll tell you about them. I just learned about MDIs or Minority Depository Institution. Stay with me. I know it's like, it's like they are determined to turn us off from financial anything from name alone. The ugliness of these names are like a weapon. They're, they're, they feel aggressive. An MDI is a financial institution where basically its ownership and its customers are majority minority, AKA it's more black and brown in that mofo than it is white. Now here's why that matters. All banks take your money and do stuff with it. They use it to make loans for other people, fund other services, or if they're a big bank, they probably use the profits to give to their already rich shareholders. But when you put your money in an MDI, your money can be intentionally directed towards services for say underbanked indigenous folks or first gen black wealth builders, et cetera. So if you search it up, there are about 20 indigenous owned banks in the US. And in a lot of cases, non-indigenous folks like me can use their online banking too. And if I bank with them, that means basically they can use my money to create loans and services specifically for the indigenous community that they serve. Now there are all kinds, hella kinds of certifications you can look for when it comes to ethical banking, but this overall principle really applies to any non-traditional financial institution out there. Like for example, Aspiration, a very climate-minded financial organization. They're a certified B Corp, which basically means this company passes a, you're not trying to ruin the world on purpose test. You can literally plant a tree with every debit transactions, that type five. Or Greenwood Bank, they're super focused on using funds to invest in black and Latinx communities. Like you bank with them and you can round up your purchases specifically to support HBCUs or the NAACP. Or like Daylight, a queer owned, queer run banking platform specifically for the gays. They provide specific financial support on goals like gender affirming surgery or family planning, all types of family planning. When I look at these institutions, I still use the same type of lens of bank need that we've been talking about. Like one, are they insured? And then low fees, though I I feel like the low fees can be flexible if I know that the money is going towards supporting a community that's important to me like this. Still looking for in-bank budgeting tools. Everyone is struggling with this. And then community compass. The point is your money can do so much more than just sit in a bank, AKA sit in a rich white dude's pockets. It all depends on what's important to you. I'm really excited for this first date. I mean, just like as a bank, it feels like it's really hard to meet other people, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. Listen, shut up for a second. I have some questions before I consider banking with you. Okay. <clears throat> Should I be scared? Fees? Uh, no maintenance fees. Overdraft fees? No, no, the transaction just won't. <laughs> You know, FDIC insured. Of course, what am I, some monster? <laughs> Interest rates on savings, 2.5. Hmm, my excess is bigger. What, do you offer car loans or home loans? Does that matter? You don't really strike me as the- Maybe. No, nope. sorry, no, nope. answer's no. Are you a certified B Corp? What was that? Like, do you try to offset your carbon footprint? Bless you. What? Don't try to change the subject. Oh, when you open an account, you can adopt a squirrel. <sighs> What's your app like? I mean, there's periodic maintenance, but only every Thursday to Tuesday. Customer service? Invasive. Cash access. Why? Like physical branches. What if I have a cash deposit? I mean, does that matter? Like who uses cash anymore? <laughs> I work in the service industry, elitist. Yeah, yeah, sorry. No, we're done here. But I feel like we just started. We're done. But yes, you may send me email marketing. I'm curious. Ah, that's fair. Well, can you share that list with me actually? Cause I'd love to just, oh yeah, for sure. Screenshot, screenshot this so you know what to look for in a bank next time. Ah. I've done my research. I've dated around and it's time to make my decision. On a new bank. I'm looking for a new bank. The three candidates, Ally Bank, Greenwood Bank, and Self-Help Federal Credit Union. But I only have one dollar in my hands, one fake dollar, ten dollars. Now, if Ally Bank comes up with those buckets in the checking accounts, I will be moving my checking account money there. But, surprise spin move, I think I'm gonna move my emergency fund money from to self-help federal credit union. I'm doing some research on them. I'm looking at their board of directors. I see a lot of BIPOC with community track records. I like that they create scholarships for Bay Area youth. I really like that their programs support people within like a 10 mile radius of me, the community I actually live and work in. I like what I see. I'll let you know how it goes. And that is on episode three of Money Out Loud. If you like this and you want more, you might want to pre-order my book, also called Money Out Loud, because our fourth chapter is all about banks. Order my book at heyburna.com or anywhere you order books, go local. It's coming out April 25th. I'm Berna, this is Money Out Loud. Ally, call me.
Do I look pleasant while I'm talking to colonizers? All right, it's time for Dave. The hands, I don't know what the hands are doing. 